Stephanie Claytor is giving us a tour and you've got Picasso's behind you. That's exciting. This is a big get for the museum, Stephanie. Definitely a big get, Holly. It's pretty incredible that these pieces are here in Polk County. Works from Francisco Goya and Pablo Picasso. Stephanie, what are you seeing there? Hey, Al, what a difference from noon. The wind has picked back up. You can see my umbrella. I'm holding on to it here. Debris is everywhere from where this roof collapsed over there. You can see it. Stephanie, this wasn't just a small knife they plan to use, according to investigators. Not at all, Veronica. This is a picture of a butcher knife that one of the girls allegedly had concealed underneath her clothes. The Bartow police chief said that this could have been a mass casualty event had the school staff not acted upon a rumor that something bad was going to happen at the school on Tuesday. Jack and other neighbors said they put these signs out on properties throughout this neighborhood. During today's conference, these horse advocates are learning how to better load the horses into trailers and they're also learning how to help these horses navigate obstacles with ease. The United States Department of Agriculture is expected to release its next citrus forecast on December 11th. Josette says everything in this room was donated by people shopping at the Dollar Tree. Thousands of calls and thousands of dollars shelled out to pay for the help. Stephanie, you spoke with the police chief. What is he saying tonight? Well, Veronica, Police Chief Larry Giddens said after watching the surveillance video, he believes that his officers' actions followed the department's use of force policy in this incident. This deadly police shooting of 17-year-old Michael Taylor in a chaotic, crowded parking lot of about 200 people has some upset. It's very scary because I thought the police was supposed to protect us. They got me scared. Tamir Rivers was in a car behind Taylor's when she heard at least seven shots. The surveillance video shows Taylor driving toward an officer and officers shooting at Taylor. Officers were trying to stop him for being in a stolen car. This person ignored multiple verbal commands. All that suspect had to do was follow those commands. And the next 46 seconds wouldn't have happened and he wouldn't have lost his life tragically. I asked Lakeland Police Chief Larry Giddens what he would have done if he was there. I believe that the tactics they used that night based on everything that they were dealing with, the time, the location, the space, the number of people, I think our officers did a very, very good job. The president of the Lakeland branch of the NAACP disagrees. He met with the chief today. I felt that the, there's a possibility that maybe the police could have moved in and blocked the entrance. Uh, I thought that might have been a, a, some consideration that should have been put in place. Um, I was concerned that uh, so many shots was fired when there was a lot of people in the, in the immediate vicinity. Reginald Artis said Chief Giddens disagreed with him. Was there an option to not approach the vehicle? And then what does that say? Are we not going to try to take criminals into custody? What do you do there? Do you just let it leave and then we get into a pursuit and some innocent family gets hit? Others believe the officers should have aimed for the tires. So shooting tires isn't isn't a good practice. It's not a good practice because it will not stop the vehicle. Artists wants parents to step up in order to prevent this from happening in the future. We want the community to understand that the police has a job to do, but we need to be more protective of our kids. We need to tell them uh, there's nothing good going to happen at 2.30 in the morning. Police Chief Larry Giddens said that this shooting is still under investigation with his department along with the state attorney's office and he said that investigation could take for six to eight months to complete. Reporting live here in Lakeland, I'm Stephanie Claytor, Spectrum Bay News 9. 83-year-old Olga Colon is recovering from surgery. Doctors had to pin her finger back together. She's also got some cuts and sore shoulders after being attacked last night in Sefner on King William Circle. She says she can't get the images of the attack out of her head. When her niece showed her a picture of this coyote, she said the animal looked just like it, but bigger. 
She said it attacked her chihuahua, and when she grabbed her chihuahua, the animal attacked her and knocked her to the ground. She said it ripped her dog out of her hands. She said the coyote put her dog in its mouth and left. After she was attacked, Olga knocked on one of these doors for help. When no one answered, that's when she drove with her injured finger all the way to her niece's house. She's like, I have an emergency. And she took out this wrap and her fingers hanging and she's bleeding everywhere and she's crying because she's telling me the story that she got attacked. Fortunately, she had on this coat which protected her from more injuries. Her neighborhood is full of kids just on the other side of Sefner Elementary. Everybody needs to be on the lookout because you're not just, today was a chihuahua that died and a finger that was almost lost or or uh, you know, I don't know what's gonna happen, but tomorrow it could be anybody's kids or anybody else's pet. In Hillsborough County, Stephanie Clay Tour, Spectrum Bay News 9. Sylvia Mejias is doing quite well in Lakeland. She says her job teaching at Garner Elementary pays a lot more than in Puerto Rico. I have a better job here. My husband had a better job here. Sylvia and her family evacuated to Lakeland last October. In less than a month, she got her job. Her husband is now working for the school district too as a school safety guardian. We have a better life here than in Puerto Rico. More than 690 Puerto Rican evacuees were enrolled in the Polk County School District last school year. And more than 2,800 Puerto Ricans have made their home in Polk County since last October. That's according to driver's license statistics provided by the state. Hillsborough County received about 100 fewer. Milagros de la Rosa, who volunteers with I Am The Group Foundation, says many in Hillsborough County are struggling. La mayoría. She says the majority who've called the foundation are still living with relatives. She's in the same boat. Her inability to speak English has prevented her from getting an administrative job. I sad. I feel sad. Milagro says she doesn't want to go back to Puerto Rico. She says the jobs aren't there either. No, it's easy. Got the train. Sylvia encourages her fellow Puerto Ricans still struggling to make a new life in Florida to avoid giving up. I had a lot of doubts when I came. The language barrier, but every day it's getting better. If you, if you work hard, if you try to learn, if you try to adapt, you, you're going to make it. Stephanie Clay Tor, Spectrum Bay News 9. Dusty, dear, you may seal this declaration. With weeks left to live, Dustin Snyder got the one thing he wanted, to marry his high school sweetheart, Sierra. She's been by his side ever since he learned he had cancer. Probably after my first surgery, when she was there for me in the hospital for 10 days straight, didn't ever leave. That's when I knew she, she was the one. With you here, makes this life I leave worth living. The couple thought the cancer was gone in November, then January. They got the worst news. It was back, and the prognosis wasn't good. Sierra was there for that, too. I wouldn't have been, without her and my family, I wouldn't have had any strength to be here right now. That's why Dustin knew he had to put a ring on her finger as soon as possible. You are truly my soulmate. I will always love you. And Sierra knew she had to stay by his side. Kindness goes a long way and, you know, you love them, be there for them, why not? Now this entire ceremony is quite remarkable. The couple planned it in four days. So honestly, we, we don't know how much longer he does have. I hope it's a very long time and I'm grateful for every day that he wakes up. The rings, the venue, the dresses, everything was donated. I can't thank everybody enough who put this together. Like, they're definitely miracle workers for sure. And thanks to the online donations, the couple can now enjoy their honeymoon at Disney. Reporting in Central Florida, I'm Stephanie Claytor. Cameron Alley rushed to the call for help to restore power in Puerto Rico back in October. He never thought he'd return home like this. I'm extremely thankful and happy that I'm able to come home to my wife and my kids and that, you know, basically I get a new start. This is GoPro video of the day he fell. He was suspended from a helicopter working on electric poles in the mountains. Then the unthinkable happened. Somehow he got disconnected from the cable attached to the helicopter. It was just a split second before I hit the ground, I told myself, you know, 
This is it. He turned his GoPro on when he landed, surprised he was still alive. I just fell off a tower. Holy crap, I don't know what happened. He's now recovering from a list of injuries, including broken ribs and fractured wrist. Doctors told him he may never be able to use his left hand again. It's hard. Um, you know, of course, I tell myself, you know, I'm going to do better than that. But it does scare me that, you know, I won't be able to go back to my normal activities or to my job that if I can't ever really use my hands again. Despite all of his injuries, Cameron Alley only spent a little more than two weeks in the hospital. He still expects to undergo several more surgeries as well as physical therapy. You want your patch on that side? His wife is on medical leave in order to give him around the clock care. We've had a lot of learning curves thrown at us. Um, it, people don't realize they, they look at it and think, oh, he's just got two broken arms and that's not it. He can't push himself up off the couch. He can't give himself something to drink. Throughout his recovery, Cameron said he's been doing some soul searching. Now it feels like I have to figure out what my lifelong purpose is after that because surely I was put here for a reason. And God said, you know, this is not your time to go. One thing is for sure, his love for his dangerous job hasn't faded, just like the tattoo never will on his arm. That's what I've been doing my whole life. and. Um, if I could get back at it today, that I would. In Polk County, Stephanie Clay tours Spectrum Bay News 9.